Cesar Romero was a man born into a life of privilege in New York City in 1907. His father, Cesar Giulio Romero, was an Italian-born sugar and machinery exporter, while his mother, Maria Mantilla, was a talented singer and pianist. The family had emigrated from Cuba and enjoyed a comfortable lifestyle until the sugar market collapsed, causing them to lose their fortune. Romero had a fortunate upbringing, attending prestigious schools such as Riverdale Country and Caligia in New York. It was there that he discovered his love for acting, taking part in his first school production of The Merchant of Venice, where he played four roles. Despite being a generally unmotivated student, Romero's good looks and charm made him a popular figure amongst New York's elite. He was the epitome of the tall, dark, and handsome Latin lover akin to the famous actor Rudolph Valentino. After the demise of his father's business, Romero found himself working in a Wall Street bank. However, his passion for show business remained strong, and he had no interest in pursuing a career in finance. In 1927, a young and handsome Cesar Romero was approached by a wealthy heiress named Elizabeth Higgins, who had a proposition for him. She wanted to form a dance team, and Romero's innate charm and love of dancing made him the perfect candidate. Despite having no formal dance training, he threw himself into this new career and quickly became an accomplished ballroom dancer, performing in the theaters and nightclubs of New York City. Although the duo never achieved the same level of fame as other dance teams, their performances were highly regarded, earning them billing at some of New York's finest dinner clubs, such as Club Richmond, the St. Regis Roof, the Ambassador Roof, and the Montmartre Cafe. As he had done throughout his youth, Romero relied on his good looks and Latin lover appear to win the favor of the theater elite. His talent and charm soon caught the eye of the Broadway world, and he and Higgins were invited to join the cast of the upcoming revue, Lady Do, at the Liberty Theater in Manhattan. On April 18, 1927, Romero made his Broadway debut in the production, performing the Foxtrot, Waltz, and the Tango for a total of 56 shows. After sustaining a painful injury while dancing with a new partner, Nita Vernil, at Club Montmartre in 1929, Cesar Romero's career as a dancer came to an abrupt end. However, this setback did not deter him from pursuing a career in theater. Romero opened in The Street Singer in September of the same year, alongside Andrew Toombs, who would become his longtime companion. The show ran for 191 performances, and it was during this time that Romero caught the attention of producer Brock Pemberton. Pemberton saw something special in Romero and offered him the role of Count de Ruvo in his production of Strictly Dishonorable. He then appeared in the social register during the first half of 1932, before taking on the role of the chauffeur in the hit show Dinner at Eight. The show was a resounding success, running for 232 performances in New York and later becoming a successful road show. Cesar Romero's first screen appearance was in the 1933 film The Shadow Laughs. However, his big break came when he was signed by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer to play a small role in the 1934 hit film The Thin Man after an impressive screen test. In those days, actors worked exclusively for the studio that signed them. Romero was then loaned out to Universal Studios for his next film, British Agent. After its release, Universal offered him a three-year deal. One of his most memorable roles came in 1935 when he played a sexy gigolo in the edgy comedy The Good Fairy, written by Preston Sturgis. From the beginning of his career, Romero was often typecast as the ultimate Latin lover, which opened doors for him but also limited his career. Throughout the 1930s, Romero appeared in several other films for Universal, including Hold'em Yell and Diamond Jim, and was also loaned out to 20th Century for films like Clive of India and Cardinal Richelieu. He landed the lead role in The Devil is a Woman when the original actor dropped out of the project. Once awarded a lead role in movie, Romero's chance to claim a spot as a full-fledged leading man had passed when the film was pulled from theaters after just seven months. The Spanish government complained that it presented an insulting image of the Spanish military, making the film a commercial and critical failure. After leaving Universal Studios over disagreements with his pay, Romero joined 20th Century Fox in 1937. He would stay with the studio for 15 years, making nearly five movies each year. 
Romero was known as Butch to his close friends. He was given this nickname as a comic antithesis to his demeanor. In Hollywood, Romero often referred to himself tongue-in-cheek as the Latin from Manhattan. During the late 1930s and early 1940s, Cesar Romero starred alongside some of Hollywood's biggest stars. He appeared alongside Shirley Temple in Wee Willy Winky and in The Little Princess, in which he played Ram Dass. He also worked with Sonia Henning in Happy Landing. After playing a henchman in Return of the Siskel Kid in 1939, Romero later became the first Latin actor to portray the Siskel Kid, a role previously played by Anglo actors. Additionally, he appeared in supporting roles in several musicals, including the 1941 films Tall, Dark, and Handsome, The Great American Broadcast, Dance Hall, and Weekend in Havana. Romero joined Betty Grable in springtime in the Rockies and Coney Island, and he reunited with Henny in wintertime in 1943. However, in 1942, Romero enlisted in the United States Coast Guard. Before that, he had served as a lieutenant in the California State Guards, as a member of the Evacuation Corps, and as an ear warden. During his three-year stint with the Coast Guard, Romero rose to the highest of non-commissioned ranks, Chief Boatswain's mate. Once World War II had ended, 20th Century Fox decided to send Ricardo Romero and Tyrone Power on a promotional tour of South America. Upon returning from the tour, Romero landed one of the few starring roles of his career. He played the part of the Spanish explorer Hernando Cortez in the 1947 film Captain from Castile. Over the next two years, he appeared in seven more films before ending his long-standing relationship with 20th Century Fox in 1950 to become a freelance actor. Romero remained active and continued to make an average of one movie per year over the next three decades. He appeared alongside some of Hollywood's biggest names, including Gary Cooper and Burt Lancaster in Vera Cruz, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin in the original Ocean's Eleven, and John Wayne in Donovan's Reef. Additionally, he had a role in the Oscar-winning film Around the World in 80 Days in 1956. Romero was known for his prolific movie schedule, which kept him busy throughout the 1980s and early 1990s. However, his last film appearance was in 1991 in the black comedy Mortuary Academy. In the 1950s, the advent of television provided a new platform for Romero to showcase his diverse talents. He made regular guest appearances on a variety of shows including westerns, comedies, and dramas. Romero was a familiar face on popular shows like Zorro, Bonanza, Wagon Train, and The Love Boat. During the mid-1950s, Romero starred in a short-lived television series called Passport to Danger. He played the role of a mysterious foreign courier in the show which aired from 1954 to 1955. In the 1980s, at the age of 78, Romero spent two years playing Jane Wyman's love interest in the popular dramatic series Falcon Crest. Romero's most recognized role among baby boomers is his two-year stint as the Joker, Batman's maniacal archenemy, on the Batman television series. The series, which starred Adam West and Burt Ward, aired from 1966 to 1967. Romero also played the Joker in the 1966 feature film Batman. Cesar Romero was an actor who defied the stereotype of the Latin lover that plagued many Latino actors during his time. This was evident in his personal life as well. Romero, who never married, lived with members of his extended family for most of his life. Despite never marrying, Romero was known for having many famous women on his arm, including Hollywood icons Joan Crawford, Marlene Diedrich, and Anne Sheridan. His charming personality, combined with his impeccable manners and dress, made him a favorite escort among the stars. Tragically, Romero passed away on January 1st, 1994 at St. John's Hospital in Los Angeles. He died from a blood clot caused by complications from severe pneumonia and bronchitis. He was 86 years old. With his passing, Hollywood bid farewell to the beloved Latin from Manhattan, Cesar Romero. Goodbye and rest in peace.